now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure we'd all like to welcome an old member back into our midst. A member who's been, for the last three years been traveling in the Orient. I refer, of course, to Mr. Hardy Livingston. Who comes back to us bearing several scars, which he claims were inflicted by tigers. But he doesn't say whether they were male or female tigers. <laughs> but those of us who know our Livingston have our suspicions. <laughs> but I shouldn't be uh, picking on Hardy because he's promised to do us a great favor. He's uh, promised to lend us that magnificent house of his for the Milk Fun Ball. <laughs> I'm sure we all appreciate this, and I'm also certain that uh, we'd like to hear a few words from Mr. Livingston. <laughs> I dare say that when I tell you that I'm glad to be back, it sounds, to say the least, banal. Banal? Careful, Hardy, ladies present. <laughs> All right, <laughs> But my delight at being here is so genuine that nothing I say can be banal. Yeah. <laughs> Hardy, leave the room. It's a good word, stick to it. <laughs> as for any possible generosity of mine in letting you have your milk fund ball at my house, don't consider it as that. Think of it rather as a slight gesture on my part to bring you together under my roof, where I may feel that I am somewhat, if not entirely, your host. Oh, <laughs> oh boys. Oh, boys. Hello, Leslie. Hello, Hardy. Hello, Jim. Hello, Hardy. Hello, Hardy. Hello, Hardy. Hello, Hardy. Hello, Hardy. Hello, Jeff. You're late, you lucky dog. What's going on? Uh, still out there making speeches. Big plans to raise money for the milk fund. I don't know what they're going to do with all the milk when they get it. I suppose somebody likes it. I don't know. Big welcome home to Hardy Livingston. Big offer of house for something else. I don't. I make the one and only excuse and sneak out. Then I fool them and don't come back. <laughs> Is my wife in there? Sure, she fools them too. She matches coins all during the speeches and doesn't have to listen. Does she really? Oh, that's terrible. Don't be sanctimonious. Pretty easy for you to stay at the office tonight yourself, wasn't it? I stay every night. By golly, I believe you do it that. Just came across me. I haven't seen you play golf all summer. I can't get away. I've got a couple of deals in the fire, and I can't leave them, that's all. That's a crazy way to live. You shouldn't work so hard. What's it going to get you? A million, I hope, someday. Well, I wouldn't do it for any man. Neither would I, but for a certain woman. Well, she's pretty nice. I don't care much for them as a race, but she's pretty nice. She's wonderful, Leslie. I didn't begin to live until I met that girl. And there's nothing in the world I wouldn't do for her. You're going to have me crying in a minute. Come on, let's have a drink. <laughs> Where's Jeffrey? Oh, he had to work for it, darling. Isn't it awful? I'm glad I'm not a man. You're not serious. Of course I am. I couldn't bear to have so much on my mind. I'm the helpless type, darling. Didn't you know? <laughs> I think I'll gamble. I feel lucky. I'll do my work. <laughs> We're not gambling, dear. You simply clean me up. No, no. clinical interest in this man. What's the trouble? He's in love with his wife. I know, and after four years. Can't help it, boys. I'm sorry. Oh, why don't you do something about it? It's disgraceful. It's worse than that. It's indecent. Here's to her. <laughs> no, the Oriental woman isn't really a slave. 
She's simply been well trained, that's all. She knows her business. But what about the tiger? It really was a tiger. But as a matter of fact, it brought me luck. Luck. Finished. I'll have to give you an IOU until tomorrow evening. Certainly, madam. I'll cut the cards with you. If I draw higher, the debt's cancelled. If not, I owe you 10,000 instead of five. Very well, madam. Eight is high. Thank you, madam. Good night. Good night. I followed you out here. Do you mind? I should. Indirectly, you made me lose $10,000. Did I? You were talking behind me in that very carrying voice of yours. I'm sorry. I heard you say the word luck. <laughs> I thought it was a hunch. I should feel badly, but I'm flattered. Well, you needn't be. It wasn't your personality, Mr. Livingston. Just your very loud voice. <laughs> Could I redeem myself by buying you a drink? Do you like Japanese wine? Oh, well, I never knew they had Japanese wine in the club. Oh, not at the club, at my house. It'll only take us a moment. My boat's alongside. Will you? As a climax to the evening's indiscretion. You're not afraid to take chances? Oh, no. I like to take chances. All right. Come along. If I go, will you tell me all about the world, Mr. Traveller? That's simple. It's round, they say. But I've always found it quite flat. Until now. How frightfully exciting. Which means? I'd like to see your house.
This is my holy of holies. Do you like it? Well, I don't know. It's strange. Not to me. I suppose you smoke opium here and hold all sorts of exotic rituals. Opium has never agreed with me. But in the audience, some of us use it as you would cigarettes. Oh, how dreadful. That depends upon your point of view. It's Yama, the god of destruction. What's in there? My past. Your past? Oh. Would you dare open it? Would you dare look at it? <laughs> well, is it so frightful? I call it my gallery of ghosts. But how charming. Why, they're lovely dolls. Once there were lovely women who were kind to me. Oh, Bluebeard's chamber. <laughs> well, I should say that your past had been rather international. Perhaps in knowing many women, one is able to appreciate the one woman when she comes along. How negligent. One shelf unused. I still have a few years to live. Mm. I suppose this is her name. <laughs> I have you forgotten their names. That's my crest. It's a Japanese character. I brand all my belongings with it. It means I possess. What a strange man you are. How few people seeing with the club realize you're like this. You're really two men. Which do you prefer? Well, I couldn't say. I don't know either. What's behind that door? Somebody's head strung up in a closet, I'm sure. <laughs> Worse than that. Oh. I must admit you're very clever at planning your conquests. Aki. Success. Mm. Yours. Ours. Ah. It belonged to a Siamese princess. Oh. Oh, but it's marvelous. It's yours. Oh, I couldn't. I made you lose tonight. Won't you take it as some slight return? <laughs> They're real, aren't they? That must be worth a fortune. It will be worth twice as much on you. You'd look wonderful in it. You must wear it for me. Let me see you in it. I must go. You won't accept this? No, of course not. But why must you hurry? My husband will be looking for me. Are you in love with your husband? Yes. Isn't it too bad? Not necessarily. But I really am, you see. When shall I see you again? I'm awfully busy. You'll be at the bazaar on Wednesday. I'll see you there.
dear. This is Mr. Livingston. He was nice enough to take me off the shore and show me his new house. It's really too beautiful. That was nice. It was a pleasure. If you'll excuse me. Oh, good night. Thank you so much. I shall hope to see you soon. Well, you don't like him. Livingston? Hmm. Hasn't a very good reputation with women. Oh, Jeffrey, do you think I was born yesterday? Sometimes. Oh, now don't be cross with me, please. Darling, you mustn't mind if I'm a little jealous. You know why it is. Because I love you more and more every day. Oh, sweet, go on making love to me. I'd like to, but somebody might see us. Oh, shocking, young matron necking with husbands. I'm not your husband. Gracious. I'm your lover. Always. Always. Even if, if at times I do things that don't please you. Mad things. Because you know, Jeffrey, I am mad. Mad about living. Things going round, I love them. Ferris wheel, train wheel, roulette wheel. Ah. <laughs> you think I'm crazy, don't you, darling? But you'd never let me go, would you, Jeffrey? I'll never lose you, will I? Well, I don't know. What do you mean? You will if you don't haul in a little on your expenses. No, oh, money. Well, we have to have it to live, and we have to talk about it now and then. Are we broke again? Not exactly. We'll have to watch ourselves until this deal comes. Of course, it will pretty soon. When it does, we'll have all the money we want. You're not angry because... Well, of course I'm not. You know, darling, I'd give you anything in the world. Would you? Would you give me $10,000 now? $10,000? What for? Oh, Jeffrey, I was only joking. Come on, darling, I want to go. I want to go home. And I'm going to drive. I want to drive fast. $14,612. My, what a lot of money. Oh, hello. How hello. do you do? Must have been a great success. Yes, it was. Well, it deserved to be. The girls have all worked so hard. Oh, we loved it. I'm impressed. But we want you to be. Otherwise, you might take your house away from us. No, I wouldn't do that. But we wouldn't let you. It's too late now, anyway. We've made all our plans. It's to be Oriental, you know. Last year, we used the American Indian motif, and by the most peculiar coincidence, practically all the members came as Pocahontas. <laughs> which the board objected to because they said there was some doubt as to whether she really married John Smith. <laughs> Shall we go? Yes, as soon as I get the money. That's the important thing. Oh, Elsa, I wouldn't even bother to put it in the bank because we want to give it to Mr. Durkin on Wednesday. I'll guard it with my life. As long as I can keep it away from this man, everything will be easy. <laughs> Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, darling. Thanks Goodbye. so much. Goodbye. 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 Did you notice how he never took his eyes off her one minute? Now, now, girls, no gossip. How do you mean he never took his eyes off her? I'm going to drive by my house. No, I must go straight home. No, my place first. <laughs> you see, I've decided that you should wear the Siamese princess robe to the ball. Oh, no, I couldn't. Really, I couldn't. Your husband? He might object. Besides, I know how valuable it is. I'd be frightened something might happen to it. I'm determined you shall wear it. Perhaps I'm just as willful as you. Perhaps. But you'll compromise. Vanity. <laughs> Take the package inside. You're very persuasive. You not only make me take it, but you make me feel positively virtuous in doing so. Don't worry. My motives are entirely selfish. I want to see you in it. Well, uh, 
Goodbye. Thank you. Oh, uh, take that upstairs and give it to Rita, will you, Jones? Yes, madam. There's a gentleman to see you in the drawing room. Who is he? Said his name is Brady, but he wouldn't tell me his business. Good afternoon. I told you. Yes, Mrs. Carlyle, I know, but... You uh, didn't have to come here to my home. Well, something happened today. Something that makes it necessary for me to collect at once. I'm sorry. I can't do it today. But, Mr. Carlyle... Oh, no, no. Give me two more days. Surely you can do that. Very well. But I must have it then, or I should be obliged to present the IOU to your husband. Good day, madam. Anything else, Mrs. Hello, dear. Hello. Hard day? Sort of. You'd think from the way they talk downtown that the whole country was going to be put up for sale cheap in six months. Is it? No. When everyone's blue, it's the time to buy. And when the crowd's buying, it's the time to sell. I know that and everybody knows it. But it's terribly hard to get people to put money into a deal feeling as they do. Oh, I'm sorry you have to work so hard, Jeffrey. Oh, I didn't mean to talk about it. It's my job. I have a number of things on my mind, that's all. Mm, uh, Joan said you came in with someone. Yes, Hardy Livingston. You know what I think of him. Yes, I know, darling, but he happened to drop by the bazaar and ask if he could drive me home. There's nothing wrong with that. These bills came in today. Darling, you must try to economize. Just a little longer. Any day now, this deal may come through, and then you can buy the whole city if you like. I don't mean to be extravagant, Jeffrey. I know. You just don't think, that's all. But darling, nearly a thousand dollars, they're just for clothes. Heaven knows I want to see you look lovely, no, but... No, now don't be mad with me. I love you so. Yes, I know. But you can't ignore details. <laughs> That's true. But they tell us love is everything. It isn't, is it? You sound so hopeless. <laughs> well, sometimes it seems that way. Darling, what's wrong? Money. Money? No, I didn't mean that. Don't worry, we'll have it soon. Well, let's not talk about it, darling. Isn't there something gay we could do tonight? Yes. Let's go out for dinner. Will you have dinner with me, Mrs. Carlyle? <laughs> where should we go? Oh, I know, Jeffrey. Let's go to that funny little speakeasy where you asked me to marry you. What a place. I'll see you in my dreams. Hold you in my dreams. Naughty, 
naughty. I caught oh. you. <laughs> Hello, Terrell. Sit down. That's what I'm trying to do. Hey, Always making love to his wife. Of course, I don't blame him. Oh. What's doing down your end of the street? You should know. Well, I'll tell you why I came over here. Not to interrupt this love scene, but to let you in on something I just got a hold of that's hot. Yes? United Copper. You're crazy. I wouldn't tell you this if I didn't know. You think you know, but... In 24 hours, it's going to double in value. Now, I know you're all tied up in another proposition, but take my tip, raise a little money on the side, and get into this thing. But Jeffrey, if it's going to double... Now, darling, you don't understand these things. I've got a hunch. You're always having hunches, dear. That's the trouble with your husband, Elsa. He's too conservative. Jim Blake is a pal of mine, and his father-in-law runs the pool. And he tells me that inside of a week, it'll be up 100%. Now, take it or leave it. If I do this, I don't want Jeffrey to know anything about it. Well, you see, it's money I want at bridge. In that case, I suppose. Well, there's no reason why you should have to tell him, is there? No, there really isn't. After all, it's your business. And you're absolutely certain that I can double my money? It's my opinion. I put everything I own into it. All right, then. I want to invest $10,000. I just deposited the money in the bank this morning. I'll send you a check as soon as I get home. Aren't you ready? Almost. You ask me, I think I look silly in this darn thing. Mm, darling, I think you look divine. Why don't you tell me what you're going to wear? Because I want to surprise you. Hmm. Now, don't look. Close your eyes. All right. Now. Why, Elsa. Well, those are real. Mm -hmm. That must have cost a... Where'd you get it? It was loaned to me. Livingston? Mm-hmm. You don't mind, Jeffrey. You know I do. Oh, darling, don't you want me to wear it? Livingston won't miss a chance like this. You tell everyone. Oh, well, what of it? What'll they think? Ridiculous, Jeffrey. Quite. But the gossips won't think so. Don't you see how it makes me look? Like a fool. All right. I'm sorry, Jeffrey. I only wanted you to be proud of me. Oh, go on, wear it. I'm sorry I mentioned it. Oh, darling, you're so sweet. And you will be proud of me when you see me in it. You wait. It's so beautiful. <laughs>
Mr. Livingston? Yes. Mrs. Carlyle? Who wants her? Telephone, sir. There she is. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Carlyle, you are wanted on the telephone. Phone? Yes, madam. to get you at the house. They said you were at the ball. Mrs. Carlyle, listen, I... What? What's that you're saying? Oh, but you're joking. But you said there wasn't a chance to lose. You... Oh. You don't know what this means to me. Hello? 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 You cut me off, Central. Oh. Is it so terrible? Oh, I don't know what to do. What'll happen to me? I've got to have it. What? Money? I've got to have ten thousand dollars. Can't your husband give it to you? He hasn't got it. And he mustn't know ever. Oh, this is awful. It... It wasn't mine. It was the club's. I can't stand the disgrace. I can't. I've got to get it somehow. I can let you have it. You? No, no. Why not? I have the money, and naturally it upsets me to see you like this. Why, it's so simple. I can let you have the money tonight. But there's nothing to worry about. Nobody will know. It will be our secret. I don't ask much in return, only that you be a little nicer to me. And maybe, maybe some evening soon, you'll come to see me. I'll be in the shoji room in half an hour. exhausted, so I'm leaving now. But hasn't it really been a marvelous success? My dear, we made $3,000 over our estimate. I couldn't be more excited. Oh, Elsie, you needn't bother about the money. Oh, needn't I? No, because Mr. Durkin is going to take care of everything. Well, let me see. How will we get it to him? Oh, I'll tell you. I'll see you tomorrow at Bridge, and then you can turn the funds over to me, and I'll see that he gets it. Oh, that'll be fine, Louisa. Well, uh, I'll see you at 4 o'clock, then. Yes, all right. Good night, darling. Good night. You've been with Livingston all this time? I was in there, Jeffrey. I don't feel very well. This is so heavy. Shall we go? Yes. I'll get my things.
tomorrow evening. I think you'll find this all right, Louisa. Yes, that agrees with my figures. I went over to Gay last night. Oh, thank you, darling, that's fine. Now, I'll turn it right over to Mr. Dick, and then the whole thing will be off our hands. That's right. But I do think we've done splendidly, don't you? I certainly do. Just here we have a hand. Oh, a room full of beautiful women. Hello, Jeffrey. How are you doing? It's all right. Hello, Hello Jeffrey. Hello, Arthur. Oh, here's my favorite Byron. man. Tea, oh, darling? No, thanks, dear. Well, now that we've finished our business and got a glimpse of the charming Mr. Carlyle, we really must go. Don't hurry. No, please don't. Oh, we must. It's been lovely, Elsa, and I'll see you Friday at Audrey. Right. Goodbye, Goodbye. Jeffrey. Goodbye, Elsa. Goodbye, Audrey. Goodbye. See you on Friday. Goodbye. Goodbye, Audrey. Elsa. Elsa. Jeffrey, what's the matter? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, Jeffrey, darling. What are you doing? What is it? Darling, we're rich. Rich? I put it over. The papers are signed. We're rich. This morning I had practically nothing. And now we're worth a million. Oh, you oh. understand, darling? A million. We're rich. Oh, Jeffrey. Are we really? It's true. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, it's marvelous. <laughs> now we'll take a trip this summer. Hmm. Anywhere you want to go. Just to travel. And <laughs> not think about money. We'll go to Europe, to France, the Italian Riviera. Darling, just think of it. <laughs> new sights, new people. It'll be wonderful. Let's celebrate tonight, shall we? Yes. Where shall we go? No, wait. You're going to wear these. Oh, Jeffrey. Darling. But they're the most lovely ones I've ever seen. Oh. Put them on me. <laughs> My pearls. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'll go. Hello? Yes? This is Mrs. Carlyle speaking. I'm expecting you tonight. Oh. Tonight? Oh, but I can't. It's quite impossible. Do you want me to come to your house after you? And ask your husband's permission? No, no. All right, I'll be there. I'll be there. Yes. Yes, that's all right. Goodbye. Who was that? Um, oh, that was Mrs. Albright's secretary. What did she want? There's to be a meeting this evening. Do you have to go to it? I'm afraid so. Funny Mrs. Albright didn't say anything about it when she was here. Yes, well, it came up quite unexpectedly. I'm awfully sorry. But it's frankly important. Jeffrey, if I wanted some money, a lot of it, right now, could I have it? Of course. Well, I need $10,000. What for? A gambling debt. At the club? How did you know? A man came to me with your IOU today. I paid him. Oh, that was sweet of you, darling. That isn't all. I owe 10,000 more. 10,000 more? I've got to have it right away. All right, I'll give you a check. Oh, Jeffrey. Please don't be angry with me. I know I was foolish. I made a mistake. I'm awfully sorry. It won't happen again, I promise you. Jeffrey.
put it there. Yes, sir. Ah. Uh, I'm through with you for the evening. Yes, sir. I don't want to be disturbed. Understand? Yes, sir. I didn't expect you to come that way. I didn't want to be seen. Oh, you'll be here often. No, 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 I can't stay. Here's your money. My money? It's yours. I owe it to you. You misunderstood me. I didn't lend you that money. I gave it to you. Yes, as part of a bargain. This check cancels it. Come now, Elsa. We didn't make that kind of a bargain. Oh, please don't. Can't you see that I don't want to stay? You've changed since yesterday. Oh, you don't understand. I do understand you, Elsa, perfectly. Better than you understand yourself. You have money now, and I'm of no further use to you. But if you're trying to appeal to my better nature, it's hopeless, for I haven't any. You're going to stay here. You made a promise, and you're going to keep it. I'd rather kill myself. Kill yourself? Oh. Oh. All right. Do it. Go ahead. We're alone. I've dismissed the servants. We're back a mile from the road. Nobody will hear you. Well? Oh, really? This is too absurd. What? We are both behaving outrageously. You're not the kind of man... You don't know what kind of man I am. But I'll show you. See this? You recognize this? You know what this means? It means that because you made a promise, I was fool enough to think you were mine. I even marked it as mine. You want to go? All right, you can. I'll let you go. But you'll carry my mark on you. Oh, no, not yet. Not yet. Oh! oh. <clears throat> no! 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 <clears throat> you... 
Now, show that to your husband. The check. Oh. No. Your... Your wife. Who did it? I shot him. Rylander 40154, please. Hello? Racket Club? Has Mr. Carlisle come in yet? No. Are you sure? Thank you. Good morning, Mrs. Carlisle. Good morning, Rita. I, I heard you moving about, so I brought your breakfast to you. Thank you, Rita. Has Mr. Carlisle come in yet? No, ma'am. Oh. Mrs. Carlisle. Yes? The paper. Paper? Oh. Rita, take this away. Yes. Take it away! Will you get me something to wear? Anything? Hurry up! Thank you. 
Hello, Jeffrey. Hello, Elsa. Oh, my dear, why did you let them do this? There's so much for you to tell me, Elsa. So much. <laughs> Easy. There, that's all right. I don't think it'll be necessary for you to have a nurse. I'll be dropping again this afternoon. Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye. And then I heard a shot, almost as if someone else had fired. And he staggered and fell against the wall. I ran away. I came home and waited. Waited all night. In the morning, I signed the papers. I knew what had happened. And now I'm going to the police and confess. No, no, you mustn't confess. How else am I going to get you out of this? You're not going to get me. But I am. You didn't do anything. You don't think I'd let you? be quiet. I won't. I can't. Oh, Jeffrey. I've been thinking all night about myself. How wicked and selfish and spoiled I am. And how good you are. And how little I deserve you. I've got to tell the truth. That's the least I can do. Darling. You mustn't call me darling. Yes, I must. You are my darling. I brought you nothing but trouble. No, dear. Some trouble, but much happiness. I'm a silly woman. Stupid and vain. I love you. I didn't marry you because I thought you could spell or add. But because you're what you are. I still love you and want to protect you. Jeffrey. Please don't. Why don't you hate me? I could stand that better. Don't cry. Well, what do you want me to do? Don't say anything to anybody. Don't even talk about the case. Just leave it to me and to the lawyer. But, Jeffrey... It'll be all right. Livingston isn't dead, and he isn't going to die. He wants revenge. He wants to drag us into court and make a scandal. But he can't do anything. We have money now, and we can fight him. I'll get off. Suppose you don't. But I will. Suppose he should tell at the trial. That wouldn't put him in a very good light. He won't tell. <laughs> Oh. Promise me before I go. Promise me you won't talk. But, Jeffrey. Promise me. You sure it's all right? Absolutely. Because I believe in you like God. You wouldn't deceive me now, would you? No. I'm not. Uh, Jeffrey, listen. From now on, I'm going to be different. I am truly. I'm going to be good. I'm going to try and be worthy of you with all my heart. I'll never deceive you again as long as I live. I may do silly things. I suppose I will. But I'll always tell you. Oh, I love you so. Is Jeffrey safe? Is he all right? I hope so. I want you to tell me the truth. I must know. It's impossible to know. I can only tell you what I think. Well? I think we'll get your husband off without any trouble. But Livingston's a tricky person. It's not easy to anticipate just what move he'll make. I'm sure he'll try to get back at you if he can. Then there might be even prison. Yes, there might, but I don't think so. I wouldn't worry about it if I were you, Mrs. Carlisle. Thanks. Shinbun. You are in the employ of Mr. Livingston? Yes, sir. I came to this country with Mr. Livingston two years ago. On the night Mr. Livingston was shot, where were you? I was in my room with the other two servants. What did you do when you heard the shot? Well, first I didn't know what to do, because Mr. Livingston said he did not wish to be disturbed. So, you see, I was afraid to go down. Then we made up our minds to find out what had happened and ran downstairs. What did you find there? I saw Mr. Livingston lying wounded on the floor. 
and Mr. Carlyle was standing there with a gun in his hand. You mean the defendant there? Yes, sir. What did you say to Mr. Carlyle? I said to Mr. Carlyle, who did it? And how did he answer you? He said, I shot him. Mr. Livingston, tell the court in your own way what happened on the night you were shot. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to go back a few days before that to the occasion of a gambling bet, a little game with Mr. Carlyle. Jeffrey. Shh. Mr. Carlyle had lost to me considerably at cards. To be exact, $10,000. He explained he was in financial difficulties and asked if I'd take his IOU, which I did. A few days later, I needed money. And I telephoned Mr. Carlyle and reminded him of his IOU. He promised to bring the money that evening. When he came, I noticed that he'd been drinking. He seemed in a rather reckless mood. He handed me the check for the amount. Exhibit 32A, please. Is that the check, Mr. Livingston? Yes. Then he suggested that we play a game for the check. If he lost, he owed me double. If he won, he kept the check. I agreed. As I went to a table drawer to get some cards, oh. I, I put the pistol in the same Jeffrey, drawer. I can't stand this. Remember your promise. Of the gun. We started playing. Well. Go on, Mr. Livingston. Well, to put it bluntly, he cheated. No! Cheater! Murder! I won't let him say that about you. Elsa, quiet. Quiet. Please, Mrs. Carlyle. Please. Continue, Mr. Livingston. Naturally, I was angry. I, I threatened to expose him, to have him put out of the club. Before I knew it, he rushed to the table drawer and opened it. I made a lunge for the pistol, but he got there first, and he fired. Your witness. May it please the court. I should like to reserve the right to cross-examine this witness later on. If the uh, prosecutor has no objection? No objection. Granted. The state rests, Your Honor. Your Honor. Gentlemen of the jury, I'm going to reverse the general order of things a bit and first ask the defendant to tell you his story in a simple and straightforward manner. Uh, Mr. Carlyle. Mr. Carlyle. Jeffrey, you've got to let me tell him the truth. It'll be all right. Jeffrey. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, self you are. I do. Now, Mr. Carlyle, will you please tell the jury your story? I have nothing to say. But, Mr. Carlyle, you... I corroborate absolutely Mr. Livingston's testimony. No! Oh. No, yes, he didn't! Sir. He didn't do it, I did it! Don't listen to him! You must listen to me! I object! You've got to hear me! Oh, you! I shot him! I shot him! My husband took the blame to save me. He wouldn't let me tell the truth because of the scandal. But I can't go through with this! He's innocent, I did it! I gambled money that wasn't mine and lost. I didn't know what to do. I was desperate. I was so ashamed. I couldn't tell my husband. <laughs> then he, he offered me the money. Oh, I knew what he wanted. I'm not trying to make excuses for myself. There aren't any. But I was crazy. I was so frightened that I'd be found out. Then my husband gave me a check. And I went to Livingston to pay him back. But he wouldn't take the money. He wanted me. He was insane. He tried to force me to stay with him. And when I wouldn't, and when I wouldn't, he did this to me. He did this to me. He branded me. He branded me and I shot him. I shot him and I'm dead. I'm dead. Get running. I'm dead. <laughs>
I move the indictment be dismissed. The indictment is dismissed. Stand up, Mr. Carlyle. You are a free man. <laughs> Darling, it's over. Yes. You must think of it as a bad dream. Now you're awake. Yes, that's it. Well, now that we're beginning again, Mrs. Carlyle, don't you think I ought to propose to you? Oh, Jeffrey. Well, how about it? Darling, this is a dream, a beautiful one. No, this time it's real. More real than before. You bet. No betting. <laughs> sure? Sure. Nothing but double solid now. Oh. All the music.